Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss hypervelocity stars once again. But I guess more specifically, we're actually going to discuss a new discovery that basically suggests that one of our neighbors, Large Magellanic Cloud, seems to be actually throwing those stars at us right from its center. And that by itself is maybe a little bit unexpected. And so let's talk about this new study that just came out and what this discovery actually tells us. But I guess first let's start with the definition and the explanation for what these hypervelocity stars or HVS actually are. And this is based on a theory from the 1980s. It was proposed by this wonderful person for whom I could only find this extremely tiny picture. This is Jack Hills, a stellar dynamics theorist who actually worked mostly on the outer solar system, but who also proposed the concept referred to as Hills Cloud, named after Jack Hills himself. Today this is also referred to as the inner Oort Cloud. And so while studying dynamics inside the Oort Cloud, he also proposed that something extremely similar potentially happens in much more extreme regions, such as for example near black holes. And so he actually predicted the existence of hypervelocity stars. Stars that move at extremely high speeds as a result of the interaction with some kind of a massive black hole. This was proposed back in 1988. And the existence of first such star was confirmed only two decades later in 2005. But the actual idea is pretty easy to understand. It's basically stars moving so fast that they essentially escape the galaxy and most likely end up traveling between galaxies due to some kind of a boost they receive from something else. Now normally inside the galaxy, at least in the Milky Way galaxy, the average star velocity is somewhat close to about 250 kilometers per second. That's basically how fast the stars orbit around the center. But some stars move a little bit faster, usually as a result of some kind of an interaction. These are actually known as high velocity stars, and we've discovered quite a lot of them in the last few decades. And the Gaia telescope has played a really important role in discovering many of these stars. It's able to measure velocity really accurately, and so so many more have been discovered since Gaia became operational. But most high velocity stars do not escape the galaxy. Yet sometimes we find a star that moves super fast, at speeds over 1000 km per second, which is much higher than the escape velocity from the Milky Way. Today it's believed that the escape velocity is approximately 530 km per second. And so any star we discover that moves faster than that has a very high chance of escaping the galaxy. But these hypervelocity stars are extremely rare. Only just over 20 have been discovered as of 2025, which is really nothing when you think about billions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. And here the question was always, how exactly are they made? Now in a typical high velocity star, which is not a hypervelocity star, these can be made as a result of different supernova. For example, if you have a binary system and one of the stars explodes, there is actually a high chance that the partner is going to get quite a kick and start moving at a very high velocity. But usually still a velocity that's not hypervelocity, not over a thousand kilometers per second. Likewise, some individual supernova can be asymmetrical and basically cause an explosion that seems to be one-sided. And in those cases, they can produce some kind of a remnant, such as for example, a neutron star moving really fast, some of which have been discovered in the past. And at least one of these neutron stars, very often referred to as the cosmic cannonball, has been discovered to be moving pretty fast, 670 km per second. This was very likely the result of asymmetric supernova. But then there's also been some really extreme examples that didn't really make sense. For example, US 708. Here this is an O-type star, so it's basically very hot and also very easily visible, but it's moving at approximately 1200 km per second. It's on the way out of the Milky Way and a supernova would not be able to produce anything like this. Likewise, back in 2019, scientists discovered the fastest star we've seen. The star whose speed was approximately 1800 km per second, which seems to be the fastest detected so far. And well here there's really only one possible explanation, which very likely applies to all of these hypervelocity stars. It's basically the result of that Hill process. The process proposed and explained by that scientist with a super tiny picture. It's also referred to as the Hill's mechanism and it basically involves binary stars captured by the central black hole. And when one of these stars falls into the black hole, the other one escapes with a tremendous kick, very often moving at thousands of kilometers per second at first, but eventually slowing down just a little bit as it moves away from the black hole because of the pull from the black hole. Now since the star near the center of black hole can easily move at thousands of kilometers per second at their closest approach, 
This is really the only way how stars can acquire such tremendous velocities without breaking some major rules of physics. And so here this star was explained as a result of the interaction with Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole of the Milky Way. And as approximately 20 such stars have been discovered in the past, it was actually believed that many of them very likely came from the same region and were very likely the result of similar interactions. In other words, many of them were assumed to be outbound stars escaping the galaxy. And here, assuming this was correct, researchers were super excited to study their trajectory. Mostly because it can actually help us map the distribution of matter in a galaxy and possibly even solve the mysteries of the dark matter halo. Because as the stars here deviate from the original trajectory, it can help us figure out what influenced their motion. But back in 2006, there was actually another interesting survey of these hypervelocity stars. And in this survey, scientists identified 21 unbound B-type hypervelocity stars located somewhere in the Milky Way's outer halo. In other words, they were not inside the galaxy already, but all of them were moving pretty fast and appeared to be traveling almost in the intergalactic space. But back then, it was assumed that all of them most likely came from the center of the Milky Way galaxy and were basically these escaped stars. But in this recent research, scientists wanted to see if this was actually true. And so here in this new study, by using the known location of these stars, and by focusing on the data from the Gaia telescope that can actually measure their velocity extremely accurately, researchers discovered something entirely different. Half of these unbound stars were not coming from the Milky Way. As a matter of fact, at first, it was not even clear where they're coming from. But their overall trajectory seemed to come from the same region. All of them were traced back to an extremely specific overdensity. Or a collection of stars somewhere out there, in this case referred to as Leo overdensity, an unusual region in the constellation of Leo that basically contains way more stars than expected. And this bizarre overdensity is also in the same location as one of the more famous dwarf galaxies, Large Magellanic Cloud. And by itself, though this is not a conclusive result, this is definitely a very intriguing coincidence. Basically here we have stars not escaping our own galaxy, but all traveling outside of the Milky Way and coming from the region, an extremely dense region, inside the Large Magellanic Cloud. But what's even more unusual is that their overall velocity can also be explained if you add the velocity of Large Magellanic Cloud as it orbits the Milky Way into the velocity of these stars. Or basically here, all of the stars seem to be boosted by about 300 km per second because of the orbital motion of the Large Magellanic Cloud. With the best possible explanation being a supermassive black hole hiding somewhere in the Large Magellanic Cloud, very likely producing these hypervelocity stars through this Hills mechanism or basically by absorbing their partner and by then tossing them out of the galaxy. And because their velocity is high enough that it cannot be explained by supernova, right now a supermassive black hole is the best possible explanation. And if this is a black hole, it would be approximately 600,000 solar masses in mass. So about 7 times less massive than Sagittarius A star, but way too massive for a dwarf galaxy. And that's because in a lot of previous research, it was always assumed that a lot of these dwarf galaxies, such as Large Magellanic Cloud, potentially don't have supermassive black holes and might only contain something much, much smaller inside. But here, this is the first indication that there is a supermassive black hole, but we just never really found it. Interestingly, by discovering a lot of these hypervelocity stars a few decades back, this is exactly how we found Sagittarius A star as well. It was actually through the observations of various hypervelocity stars very close to the black hole, but by also observing the orbits of escaping stars and calculating where they possibly came from. And so something very similar could now be done for a large Magellanic Cloud as well, because according to this study, this Leo over density is potentially hiding a supermassive black hole as well. But there's obviously one small problem here. We're basing all of this on just 10 observations. And that's because only 21 stars have been used in this study. The origin of other 11 stars is currently unknown. And in some of the previous studies, scientists predicted at least a thousand hypervelocity stars in the Milky Way, so there's definitely a lot of data we haven't discovered yet. And once we have a few hundred stars, it might be much easier to determine where they came from and if there's indeed some kind of a supermassive black hole or a source of these hypervelocity stars in the nearby Large Magellanic Cloud. Right now, though these results are kind of exciting and somewhat intriguing, there's still a chance that maybe these stars came from somewhere entirely different. But because these stars are so mysterious and somewhat exciting, we'll definitely come back and talk more about them in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the previous Hypervelocity Star videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, 
or by buying the one full person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.